back to Fireside Chat with Pat. Uh, we're going to talk now a little bit about uh, golf, um, instruction, a little theory. Uh, as you mentioned earlier, Pat, right, you've done a lot of reading and, and a lot of studying and, you know, part of the PGA education, obviously, is to learn about the golf swing. Um, you know, growing up, I, I have some hunches as to probably who your, your golf heroes were, but who were your golf heroes when you were growing up? Well, you know, like I said, I talked about, about my dad, and, and my dad was kind of more towards the Harvey Pinnock uh, Little Red Book concept rather than the Homer Kelly golf machine concept. So uh, I learned uh, that, and I've done this my whole life in teaching that, I think the most important thing as you get into the nuts and bolts of it is you have to, what I call, have a nugget. You have to go into one thing at a time. You yeah. have to, and, and then for a lot of reasons. Um, I think number one is golf is a mental game and a lot of it has to do with confidence and be able to go out on a golf course and compete under pressure and so forth. If you have more than one thought in your, in your mind, you're basically not in a positive frame. Whereas if you have one swing thought that might be, you know, take it back low, or something, or even just strengthening your grip that, that set on the range, it's like, wow, that, that game changer. Yeah. When you go out to the golf course, you know, you're excited. You want to do it, you want to go for it, you're in a positive mode. But once you have more than one or two swing thoughts, now you're in that realm, I think, where you're thinking that uh, I'm not very good or I'm gonna have trouble. So I think... Think, you know, thinking you know, golf versus playing exactly. golf. Exactly. Right. But, I, but I love, I, my idol well, always with Jack Nicholas. I love, uh, my favorite book of all time is Golf My Way by Jack Nicholas. It's my Bible. I've read it probably a hundred times. I've read almost every golf book there is, but that one was written uh, when, when Jack was had time to just write a book uh, compared to now where a lot of times they're having somebody else involved with it. Mm -hmm. um, but he really believed in, in one swing thought. And you can't have zero. I mean, some people say, you gotta relax and just let no thoughts, but you, you can't be mush. You, you have to have that one swing thought. Yeah. Um, and it reminds me of my mom and my dad. I mean, when I learned how to drive, um, you know, both my parents have passed away, but my dad was one who would get in the car with me <clears throat> and he would kind of tell me one thing, you know, it was really important and the most important thing, not just one silly thing, but the, the one key. And I loved driving. With, but my mother, God love her, would give me many things. You know, Patrick, do this. Turn, you know, turn left. Or, you know, you're driving too fast. All these different things. And so I tried to teach the way my dad taught me how to drive, and that is, and I've had a lot of success. I've given over forty thousand lessons my in my life, and um, I won't have that situation where. I did one time when I was very young, I was really excited about a lot of books I've been reading. And yeah. I had a student and I was I was like, you know, take it back low, hinge, get your right elbow tucked in, make sure when you come down you lead with your left knee, firm up left. And I remember that student looking at me, and that was when I was at Dabble Creek, just starting, and he was just completely lost. <laughs> and, and he was just and I felt something in my stomach. I was probably the that was probably the third or fourth lesson I ever gave. And I just felt awful that he was feeling that way. Yeah. And from that point on, it was always one thing. Yeah. And, but the key is, with one thing, it's got to be the right thing. It's got to be. It's got to be like if you were taking a lesson and it was reversed, what would you want them to show you? If you're having trouble slicing the ball, you don't want them to show you, you know, something else. You want to get to that point. So I think yeah. the key is you've got to find the exactly the number one problem and cause and find the root of that problem and just laser in on that in a fun way with drills and, and so forth and, and and get that player doing that one thing and they're gonna be better right away. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah that's right. Absolutely. And that and that's the fun part about being an instructor and I think the the difficult part for me, right, which is which is um, allowing myself to be silent more and to be more observant, right? I think sometimes in lessons, 
it's easy to, to coddle your, the student. Okay, great job. Okay, you know, you do great job. Let's do that again. Great job, right? Sometimes just sitting back, you know, letting them hit four or five shots in a row. And one of my favorite questions is when a student hits a bad shot, and you know, there's a number of reasons maybe he hit a bad shot, and he turns right around, what did I do wrong? Why don't you hit another ball? We're not, we're not ready for that yet. Right. Don't worry about the knowledge, right? That's, that's what your problem is anyway. Before you even hit the ball, you're wondering what you did wrong. <laughs> yeah, and I learned that uh, when we did, I did a lot of first tee. We, we developed a strong first tee program at, at Antioch at Lone Tree. We had about 200 kids. And that's the first tee's philosophy is to let the, let the student kind of figure some things out themselves and, and empower them you yeah. know, in that regard, which is good because, um, but you have to, it, you're right, you have to know when to kind of chide in and when to stand back yeah. and let them find work that way out too. Because yeah, then they gain more confidence in themselves. And that's, and that's the whole thing, right? That's right. what I always tell students at the end of the day is listen, I want you to be your own best instructor. Right. right? I'm only here a small amount of the time that you play golf. Right. right? I want to give you the tools so that when you're on the golf course and all of a sudden you hit a shot and you said, oh man, what happened? Right. You're going to know, or at least have an idea right, right. of what happened, right. an idea of how to fix it. Right, I think that's yeah. that. Those are success. Those are the successes for me when the student comes back and says, "Hey, I was in a round of golf and I didn't have my best round, but on the twelfth hole, I was able to fix what I was doing." Exactly. Amazing, right? That's the home. Run. Yeah, you have to adjust on the fly. Um, that's really the key to golf: is to know your own golf swing, not to know the swing of Ricky Fowler or whatever, but to know your own golf swing. And be your own mechanic. Um, I've had calls recently from people on vacation, actually on the golf course in Hawaii, crying <laughs> and not be able to fix your swing. And I, oh. you know, I helped them, and they, they would call me back, thank you, and so forth. But you want to be able to know your golf swing well enough so when you go out and something goes wrong in a tournament, you can you can figure it out yeah. without going through that whole four hours of problems. Let me ask you this question. And I'm going to start with the statement. I believe that tour pros are figuring out a feel almost every day.